Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial where we will be talking about geocoding using Python with an actual data set. So in this tutorial, what we are going to do is we're going to make use of a data table like this, which is from Wikipedia that shows uh, most visited museums in the world. And we're going to get this information over to an interactive map like this, which shows the geographical locations of the place. And not only that, when I click over the markers, we would also be able to see important information corresponding to each location. Now to get uh, from this sort of a raw table all the way to this kind of a map, there's actually a bit of a process involved in it. And uh, as you might wonder, to convert this kind of a table into a map with the corresponding information, you will need to have the coordinate information of each and every location. And in case if you want to get the coordinates of any of these locations, let's say for example the latitude and longitude values, the most basic and the primary method that many of us might know is to use a map service like Google Maps. And you would just do a Google Map search like this. For example, let's say if I pick Vatican Museums in this case, and if you simply right click over here, you can see the very first option is basically the coordinate information. And these are in decimal degrees, the longitude and latitude information. But that's totally fine if you're dealing with only a handful number of places. But if you have this kind of a huge data table, and if you want to obtain those coordinate information for basically every point, then following this sort of a manual procedure is going to be extremely tedious and time consuming. And it's very impractical as well. And the thing is, real data sets actually can span from data points that are extending from hundreds to thousands to millions. So each time doing a Google search to get to that point on a map and right clicking and obtaining the latitude and longitude information is not going to be practical. So geocoding is basically the process of converting names of places or addresses into latitude longitude coordinates. And the reverse process of that which is if you have a bunch of different latitude and longitude information, then converting it back into names or places or addresses, that's called reverse geocoding. And in this tutorial, we will focus on the first one, which is geocoding. And I'll show you how to perform geocoding using Python, specifically with the Nominative API, which taps into OpenStreetMap data. We'll also explore how to visualize these results on a map using GIS tools, enabling you to see your geocoded data come to life. So whether you are a developer, a data analyst, or someone who is just curious about working with geographic data, the process of getting there might be quite exciting as it covers a few different branches, uh, touching up on general data retrieval and cleaning, along with the number of geospatial components as well. So the data set that we will be looking at to get started is nothing but this Wikipedia table, which any one of you can access simply by heading over to this link right over here, which I'll be putting down in the description below as well. And what we are going to do is we are going to actually use a library called pandas in Python to read this table in, which is something we can do with pandas rather than doing this, trying to select everything and copying it probably to an Excel sheet or something like that, which completely might destroy the structure of the, of the table. We're not going to do any of that. We are going to use pandas to read this table in directly into, into a specified variable. And to do that, uh, we need a coding environment. And there are a number of different coding environments or IDEs, which stands for Integrated Development Environments. One can use like uh, PyCharm, VS Code, Spider, and so on. But for this tutorial, I'll be using Google Collab which is nothing but a free browser-based tool that lets any of you write and run Python code completely for free. The only thing is you have to have a Google account. And after that, all you have to do is just go to Google and search for Google Collab. It's this one right over here. Click on this link and it will show this sort of a welcoming screen. All you have to do is just click on new notebook and that will create a new Google Collab notebook. You can zoom in and out simply by holding control button and using your mouse scroll wheel. If you want things to be a bit more zoomed in or zoomed out, depending on your preference. And uh, right over here, you will retain this format, which is IPython notebook. And on the left side of this dot, you can just go ahead and maybe add 
a name of your choice for this project. And I'm going to call that as geocoding using Python. And one of the benefits of actually using Google Collab is that you don't really have to worry about installing most of the libraries, especially the well-known ones like Pandas, where, where if you want to use a library, most likely it's going to be installed and set up in their system. So all you have to do is just import that library. So that's what I did over here. I imported Pandas as PD. And uh, in case if you want to test whether this line of code ran properly or not, what you can do is just go to runtime and you can use any of these options. Let's say if you just want to run this cell, you can select this one. And in your very first run, it might actually take a couple of seconds because it's loading things up. And uh, if you want to run this and at the same time jump into the second cell, what you can do is you can use shift and enter. And what that's going to do is that's going to run this cell. And at the same time, it's going to jump into a new cell below that. Now, since we have imported pandas library successfully, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called web link. And in that web link, I'm just going to head over to that Wikipedia page. And I'm just going to copy this link, control C and control V over here. And after that, I'm going to create a variable called museums. And I'm going to read that table in using pandas.readHTML. And I'm going to save that table into this variable. So we'll call the pandas library pd dot read HTML. And all you have to provide right over here is just the web link as the path. And now if you just uh, go ahead and hit shift enter, you will see that uh, the code ran without any issues. And in case if you want to see how this museums variable look, I'm just going to type museums over here. And after that, I'm just going to hit shift enter again. And that's going to actually show you how this happens to look. Now in your very first try, if pandas manages to identify just this table alone and if it managed to assign that to the set variable just as a pandas data frame then the type of this museum's variable should be pandas data frame but if something else happened then the type of this museum's variable should be something else so before we actually get to the next point what we can do is we can just simply check the type of this museum's variable. And right now you can see that it's telling me that it's of the type list. And what I can only assume is that this table among maybe many other things is, is stored as just an element in this list. So just out of curiosity, I'm just going to check the size of this museum's variable or museum's list in this case. So you can see that it's just a list with one thing in it. And uh, if you want to select that one thing in a list, all you have to do is just do a little bit of indexing and say that you just want to select the very first item. And that's the only item. However, in the world of Python, when it comes to indexing, things start from zero. So if you want to select the very first element in a list, we just have to provide zero over here and after that, if I hit shift enter, yeah, now you can see that it actually managed to identify that not just the museum's variable, but if you access the first elements, first element of this museum's list, then that's actually a pandas data frame. And I'm pretty sure that that's the case because if you just uh, check the type over here, Now you can see that that actually happens to be a pandas data frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this just like this, and I'm going to just save that to a variable called, well, museums with the same name. And from now on, museums will not be a Python list like this, but museums will actually be a pandas data frame, which should look like this.
And with this, you can actually start doing all sorts of stuff that you can do with the pandas data frames. For example, let's say if you want to check the names of all the columns, you can say something like museums dot columns, and that'll return to you all the columns, which happens to be these items right over here. And before we move forward, uh, I would like to just do a slight modification to my table. You can see over here the name. There's actually an exclamation mark in front of this. And uh, I'm going to correct this. And when it comes to this column, visitors in 2023 or 2022, I just get the feeling that it's actually a bit too descriptive. I'm just going to try to shrink this into a bit of a modified name as well. City and country seems to be quite all right. Let's rename a couple of columns. So again, I'm going to call the variable museums and that's going to be equal to museums.rename. And from here, we're going to specify the old name and the new names in the form of a dictionary like this. So here it would be the current name. And right over here, the name that I would like to replace that with. And that's going to be just name. We put a comma, we come to the second line, and over here, we have to provide the actual or the current name of the second column and what I would like to replace that with. Just going to shorten it just a little bit like this. And that's pretty much it. After that, if you want to check this museum's variable, you can see that now it actually got changed. So that's how you would essentially rename some existing columns with, with a name that you would desire to have. All right, the next thing, as I showed you guys at the beginning of this video, I would like to have this visitors column displayed on the map at the end. And what I would essentially like to have is just this number right over here and not this year or basically this reference number that we have inside the square brackets. So is there a way to get rid of the stuff that's actually after the first occurrence of an opening of a bracket like this or the first square bracket like this? And the answer is yes. Well, if I want to first select this column, what you can do is you again specify the name of your data frame and after that you can just specify the name of the column that you would like to select in this case it's this and if you hit enter well shift enter yeah i think i added a space over here by mistake so now you can see that we just managed to select only one column like this and now if you say string str dot split and how you would like to split this well we are going to write a small regular expression uh, right over here and we'll specify the occurrence of either the first regular bracket like this or at the occurrence of the first square bracket like this so this actually means that we would like to split each entry at the first occurrence of this kind of a regular bracket, which happens to be a case like this. And uh, you also can see we have we have uh, occurrences like this where what I need is basically this value right over here. So I would like to split this into two parts right at the occurrence of the first square bracket. And that's what I provided over here. So we have to put this entire thing in a set of square brackets like this. And to specify the first occurrence, I'm going to pass in another parameter called n, and that n should be equal to 1. And now, if you run this, you will see that each record sort of got separated into two parts. And since you want to select only the first element of each row, all you have to do is, I'm just going to, I'm not going to get rid of this code cell, but I'll copy the same thing over here, and, and I'll specify the zeroth index like this. And that's going to sort of isolate this first value of that, which is what we were basically after. All right, so this way we can sort of isolate just the number of visitors that we need. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original museum's pandas data frame and well, I'm going to create a new column over there saying visitors and maybe within brackets, I would say 2022 or 2023. And that's going to be equal to this thing right over here. So I'm just going to copy and paste. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to create a new column in addition to whatever we have in this original pandas data frame. And it's going to create a new column after this country column. And that's going to actually record this bunch of refined data into that new column. And after that, we can say museums just to have a quick look. Yeah, I think I spelled museums wrong over here. So it should be like this. So right over here, you can see that it actually created a new column and added that data as a new data column into the existing pandas data frame. And this is basically what we need. We no longer need this visitors 2022, 2023 column anymore. So what we can do is we can just say museums equals museums dot drop and which columns are we going to drop? Well, in this case, we just, we're just going to uh, drop one column and that happens to be this visitors underscore 2022, 2023 column. And with that, if you want to check what museums would uh, refer to, what we would refer to as museums, now you can see that that column is no longer there. So guys, that's a, that's a bit of data cleaning stuff. And I hope you found that useful. From here onwards, we're actually going to get to the actual geocoding part. So until this step, what we did was we actually obtained some data from an external source. We inspected it and we found out that there are a couple of things that needs to be corrected. Let's say, for example, changing the name of some of the columns and uh, getting rid of some of the columns and altering the original data of, of a column and then saving that into or creating a new column out of it. So we did all of that just to make sure that we transformed the data from its original form into sort of a usable form. And, and that's exactly what we have done over here. All right, guys, now we are going to make use of the nominatum geocoder from the GeoPy Python library to get the coordinates of each monument. So you can just directly go ahead and say from geopy.geocoders import nominatim and at the same time we're going to import a rate limiter as well. This is basically just to avoid hitting the rate limits when we use the nominatim uh, geocoder. So for that you can say from geopy.extra rate limiter and from that we are going to import rate limiter as i told you guys one of the cool things is actually using an environment like google collab is that you don't really have to worry about installing most of this python libraries by yourself most of it is actually going to be configured for you unless you're using a very specialized library that that potentially might not be installed in the system you can just hit shift enter and and that will import those modules that you're looking for so after that we are going to have to initiate the nominatim geocoder and uh, by the way i'll be providing you with this ipython notebook as a download as a downloadable file as well in case if you want to just uh, save some time when you're typing out this code you can just go ahead and download that and open it using Google Collab as well. And that's another reason why I'm putting this kind of helpful uh, comments so that during each step of the way, you'll be, it'll be clear for you exactly what we are doing. So I'm going to create a variable called geolocator. And that's going to be equal to nominatim, which we imported right over here. We will specify, we will pass this argument user agent and we can just provide a name, something like Monument Geocoder. And, and after that, you can just click uh, Shift Enter to run this. And we're also going to create a rate limiter as well. Well, we'll just call that 
geocode and that's going to be equal to this rate limiter that we imported and there are a couple of arguments that we need to provide so over here we will need to specify this initiated geocoder and that's geolocator.geocode and over here we, we're just going to specify a minimum delay in seconds and let's set and let's set that to be one and after that you can just go ahead and shift enter all right after that if you want to obtain the latitude and longitude information at a specific place what you can do is you can randomly cre create a test variable or maybe let's just call this test since it's actually a test you can say geocode and all you have to do is just provide sort of an address in a way that the geocoder would be able to retrieve something so let's say for example if i head back to our original data table let's say if i want to actually get the address of the scottish national gallery now i could just say scottish national gallery or if i want to be a bit more helpful uh, to the geocoder to exactly retrieve what i'm looking for you can actually just provide a bit of a descriptive address like this scottish national gallery and followed by that maybe we can just provide the city and followed by that we can provide the, the country as well let's just do that i'm just going to copy this entire thing and i'm going to provide that as an address by adding maybe a comma at the end of each uh, item just like this and after that we can see what this test variable looks like if i do that so as soon as i do that you can see that it actually returned back to me a very descriptive address along with things like the the postcode and a much more descriptive address than what i gave it and along with that you can see that it actually provided me with what seems to be the latitude and longitude values of the Scottish National Gallery Museum. And uh, if I say test dot address, you can see that now it actually basically isolated only the address for me. And if I say test dot latitude, that's going to isolate the latitude for me. And similarly, if I say test dot longitude, it's going to isolate the longitude value for me as well which is pretty cool isn't it so similarly if i go ahead and maybe create another variable called test2 and this time if i happen to provide maybe the information of this in this museum in madrid in spain right over here and then we'll check the value of that test2 variable yeah perfect you can see that that time it didn't really give me a postal code or anything like that but it definitely gave me a very descriptive address to the location where it's situated in spain at the same time we have the latitude and longitude values as well so that's actually going to open up quite a lot of opportunities for us now what i can do is i can actually iteratively pass a bunch of addresses maybe these three items sort of concatenated together that might be able to provide enough information for my geocoder to retrieve the corresponding information and return back to me this detailed address along with its latitude and longitude information and that's exactly what we are going to do next and to do that, I'm going to create another column in my original museum's pandas data frame. And in that new column, I'm going to sort of combine these three items together to create a more descriptive address, which we can supply to our, our geocoder. So let's go back to museums and we will create a new column called address one i'm just going to call it address one because it's not going to be 
a very descriptive address like this, but it's just going to be sufficient enough for the geocoder to just go ahead and locate the place that I'm referring to. And that's going to be equal to, well, the record of the first column, which happens to be name. And for the time being, we'll just add a plus sign over here. And similarly, we are going to combine that with, well, the city and the country. And we can just uh, run this and see how a museum's data frame is going to look like. So as soon as I do that, you can see that it basically kind of combined everything together without really having space in between or maybe a comma in between. So if I, if I want to just basically add a comma in between these items, all I have to do is just pass in a comma and a space like this. And similarly, I could do that right over here as well. And now if I shift enter this, now you can see that it managed to basically combine these three items together and provide a fairly detailed address. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through the rows of my pandas data frame. So you can see that in total we have 74 rows and five columns. And uh, to iterate through the rows of a pandas data frame, you can actually use a for loop. So I'm just going to say for index and row in museums dot iterrows. Now, if I just print the index, what it's going to do is it's basically going to print this index until 73. So if I just hit shift enter, you can see that it for each row, it basically printed the corresponding index and similarly if I print the row instead of the index now that's going to be a bit messy because it's going to during each iteration it's actually going to print the items of every row like this which is going to be a bunch of things for example in the first iteration it's going to print what is the name that's this the city is Paris, the country is France, visitors. And then in the second iteration, it's going to print Vatican museums, Vatican city, so on. So I'm not really interested in all this other stuff, but what I would like is just this address one printed. So what I can do is I can just say that don't print everything, but just print this. address one column and now if I run this now you can see that it basically just prints the address underscore one corresponding to each row and in total there should be 74 of those items and right over here you can see that there's actually no data entry and for the time being we're just going to leave it as it is and uh, what we ideally need is not just to print this out uh, during each iteration as it's going through each row. But what I would essentially like to do is to maybe save this to a variable called ADDR, which might stand for address. And uh, we will save that to this variable. And at the same time, I'm going to do what I did right over here, where instead of test, this time I'll create a variable called location info and that's going to be geocode and what we need to provide inside here is actually going to be the address so during each iteration it's going to provide the address it's going to look for it and save that information into this location info variable each time it actually passes through a row and after that I would like to save that information maybe into a variable called full address and the full address is actually going to be location info dot address right over here you can see how you can remember how we access the full address by saying test dot address 
Similarly, over here, our test is actually the location info variable and dot address and latitude is going to be location info dot latitude. Similarly, longitude is going to be location info dot longitude. So I will add a couple of uh, descriptive comments over here just so that you guys won't be confused next time when you're looking at this code. So saving the address, latitude and longitude information into the corresponding variables during each iteration. And uh, at the same time, I would potentially like to add three more columns to our existing data frame and possibly save and tr possibly try to save that information into the same data frame as well as it's iterating through each corresponding row. So we can do something like that too. And to do that, I think it would be good to have maybe three empty columns prepared first. So what I'm going to do is before running this for loop, I'm just going to say museums. Well, we need to have one column called full address. And for now, just uh, set it to zero. Similarly, we need to have three more like this. And the second one is uh, latitude. And the third one is going to be longitude. And after that, during each iteration, when I say each iteration, basically what I refer to is each time when we pass a row of this data frame, we save the corresponding information into these three variables. And now we are going to access this newly created empty column. But this time we are just going to say museums.location. What we can do is we can simply provide the location during each iteration for it to refer to. And that location can be given based on this index. And as you can see, that index is actually getting saved during each iteration into this index variable. So I'm just going to say index over here. And after that, I would have to reference the correct column as well. And that is going to be this full address column. like this and I'm going to assign whatever it records for this full address into this particular location and similarly I'm going to do that for these other three items as well where I would like to reference the latitude column and the corresponding index during each iteration and record whatever we had for lat over here and similarly We'll reference the, the newly created longitude column and the corresponding index, and we will save the recorded longitude value to that as well. All right, guys, so we have to go through a number of items, well, 74 to be exact, and as soon as we run this script, it's going to start doing just that. And during each iteration, once it's done with each row, it's just going to print out, well, what it was working on, which address that it just retrieved. And after every iteration, well, we can have something printed like, we can use an F string over here to quite easily say, we have gotten the data for, and inside over here, what we can do is we can actually specify the full address uh, right over here. And maybe we don't need to print the address twice, right? So I'm just going to, comment this out since we don't really need it so every time when it passes each row it's just going to print out that we, are, we have gotten the data for whatever the address it happens to be so let's just go ahead and run yeah so you can see that it seems to be working fine and as you can see we ran into an error so let's just have a look at our museums variable. So you can see uh, we managed to actually create these three new items and we'll record the corresponding uh, 
full address, longitude and latitude as well. However, you can see that after a while it actually ran into an error. So I'm just going to print out maybe the first 10 items just to see what happened. And the first 10 items seems to be fine. So let's just pre print maybe the first 15 items. Yeah, so right over here, due to some reason, it didn't manage to grab the coordinates or it didn't manage to grab the full address or the coordinates. So a potential solution that we can actually think of for this issue is that uh, we can maybe just try to skip over the items for which we, we are unable to get the data. We can do a bit of exception handling where we could say, try to execute this process by saying try like this and we will tap this out uh, just like this but in case if you happen to encounter an attribute error just like what we did right over here then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say for all these three just add maybe a note saying no info. All right, we will see. We will just give it a go and see whether it works or not. Yeah, now you can see that it basically skipped over the place where we had the item where we had an issue previously and it seems to be running all right so far and guys it seems like we are done with the information retrieval process so we ran through everything we potentially might have come across a few attribute errors right like this but in case if we did we basically happened to add a record saying no info and we already reached the final entry just like this as well so i'm going to just say museums and we'll see how that looks right now so as you can see we managed to add these three new items full address latitude and longitude as well and as we expected there should be some rows where it didn't really manage to retrieve that information so now if i just want to isolate this no info rows just to have a look at it what i can say is museums and uh, the column that i'm referring to is full address now in the full address column we can say string dot contains and the word that we are trying to see whether it contains in it is no info and we are going to neglect any any rows with na in values in this case by just saying na equals false and now if i say if i run this you can see it basically returns a boolean sort of a series where for each row it'll say whether it actually contains no info or not well it's supposed to be no info yeah, so you can see that in most of the cases it's false, but there are some cases, for example, this row number 70 in this case, where it happens to contain no info in the, in the full address column. You could basically reference latitude or longitude column as well for this, since we assigned no info for those columns as well. So just to sort of return the entire row associated with each of these rows, what we can do is we can basically pass this to our museum's data frame and now if I run this you can see that now it basically just shows me the rows where no info happens to be the entry for full address and essentially what I would do is I would actually get rid of all of these rows and then clean up our data set because if nominating is not able to retrieve the information for us well there might be more advanced ways of actually getting the information however that's a bit out of scope uh, considering what we are going to discuss in this tutorial. And now if you say museums 
equals well I'm going to use the same thing over here and right around here I'm just going to pass the tilde operator which is which is basically going to negate the condition and then reassign the filtered data frame back to uh, my museum's data frame so with that if I go ahead and check museums again you can see that we no longer have those rows which contains that no info keyword which means now we have actually a very clean data set all right guys with that we managed to extract the information uh, along with the corresponding uh, latitude and longitude information and the full address and save that into a pandas data frame like this now in the next part now the next part will actually consist of bringing this information into our leaflet mapping environment where we would be able to create the interactive map using this information and guys for that we are going to import the volume library and as i told you guys since you are using google collab you don't really have to worry about in installing the volume library separately you can just directly go ahead and import it like this and after that what we are going to do is we are going to initiate a volume map and we'll assign that to a variable called m and that's going to be volume.map now in here we have to supply a number of arguments so the first argument is actually location and when it comes to specifying the location what we can do is we we can actually specify the latitude and longitude for us to sort of center the map whenever the map loads and if you ask me which coordinate information to basically use to send to the map whenever we basically load up the map but if you have a desired location in your mind that you would like to sort of you know send to the map as soon as it starts so in this case i would just maybe randomly pick the coordinate values of uh, let's say scottish national gallery but this part is completely up to you and we will pass another argument called zoom start for this we'll just specify 10 just for the time being but we can go ahead and change these values according to your preference there's an indentation error right over here and that should work and now what we're going to do is we are going to actually loop over this data frame and during each iteration we're going to create a marker for each location and whenever you go ahead and click on those markers it should be displaying a pop-up and in that display and in that pop-up i would like to embed some information like maybe the name of the location the full address the latitude and the long longitude information so to do that we're going to have to again use a for loop similar to what we did before for index row in museums dot iter rows and here we are going to sub, uh, specify the information to display on the pop-up and I'm going and for that I'm going to create a variable called pop-up info that's going to be equal to well let's put triple quotes like this and specify the name and that's going to be well during each iteration you can remember it's going to return to us the row and in row what we're interested in basically is the name come back over here and specify name and we're going to add this key br it's basically a key that's very commonly used in html just to sort of break the line and move on to the next line and in addition to name we are going to add the full address as well and similar to this it's going to be not name but 
full address from our data frame. If you quickly recall, that's this. And similarly, we are going to add latitude and longitude as well. And after that, we'll go ahead and close the triple quotes like this. And now we have to separately create a marker. And to create a marker, you can say volume.marker and you can pass in the location. So you can see during each iteration, it needs to know the location, where to create that marker at. And for that, we have to specify row, basically this thing right over here. So that during each iteration, it'll know where exactly the latitude is. Followed by that, it needs to know the longitude as well. And I'm going to pass in another argument called popup equals volume dot pop up and over there i'm just going to have this pop up info displayed we can pass in a max width argument as well well these numbers i'm just going to add a number and later on depending on the preference we can actually go ahead and adjust to our liking and after that during each iteration we are going to add this to our basically the map that we created over here. And guys, to run this, you can just go ahead and uh, click, hit uh, shift enter. Yeah, there seems to be a typo. This needs to be iteros. And this needs to be capital marker, not simple marker. Let's give it a go again and see. And it seems like it ran without any issues. And uh, if you're using an environment like Google Collab, just to display the map, now you can just simply call this map. And if you shift enter this, now you would be able to see the map in this kind of a manner. And the cool thing is that now you can actually zoom out just like this and basically start seeing all the points marked on the map using these kind of markers so that you can easily see if you're actually looking at the entire world map like this where those most visited museums happen to be located at and at the same time let's say if you want to obtain specific information about those uh, museums all you have to do is just go ahead and click on these markers and uh, you would be able to get the corresponding information like this so you can see it actually quite nicely put down all the information just as we needed the name, full address, latitude and longitude. And it actually managed to sort of embed those information in other languages as well. For example, let's say if I happen to select this one, you can see that, well, the address is actually given in Mandarin, I suppose. Similarly, at these other places as well, where Spanish is the language you can see will the text actually get uh, recorded quite accurately as well along with the accent marks and stuff like that so it doesn't really distort just because it happens to be another language and in the background you can see that uh, as soon as you see the map you probably would be able to see that it's an open street map that's running in the background all right guys so with that i think we have reached the end of this tutorial if you do have any questions that you would like to get clarified always you can add a comment down below as well so i'll see you guys again uh, with another tutorial soon <laughs>